my name is Ivy and today I will be doing an unboxing of the Osprey Sojourn 80 liter wheeled travel bag. So I just got this bag in the mail a few days ago and I haven't really taken a super deep look at it. So I thought it would be fun today to go over all the features and talk about my first thoughts and feelings when I look at the bag. So typically I am a one bag traveler. I like to travel very light. My favorite bag for that is the Cotopaxi Alpha 42 liter travel bag, which I have already reviewed on this channel. So the reason that I went with a much larger bag is because I'm going on a long extensive trip that will probably last over a year. I'm going to a yoga teacher training for a month. After that, I'm traveling around India, so that's why I wanted a backpack. And then after that, I'm moving to Australia on a working holiday visa where I plan on settling down more. So I wanted to have extra space without having a suitcase. So with all that in mind, let's get into the bag's features. So here is the bag in question, the Sojourn Wheeled Travel Pack. So the reason that I was drawn to this bag is because of the feature of the wheels. So this bag is a wheeled travel bag with the ability to turn it into a backpack. So this bag is more of a rolling bag first, backpack second, which, which is exactly what I was looking for. Um, I am getting a little bit older and so I have a lot of back pain. So having a backpack that's really heavy just isn't as realistic for me anymore. So I really like that I can mostly use this as a wheeled suitcase and then for those special times, that's when I can convert it to the backpack. So you will see this bag is freaking huge. I am 5'5", five five, and when I'm sitting, this bag is as tall as me. It goes really high up onto my body, so I will show that later on in the video, the size comparison of how this looks like when it's on me or standing next to me, because it is a really, really large bag, I'll be honest. But overall, the construction of the bag is absolutely beautiful, as it should be, because this is a pricey bag. This is the most that I've ever spent on any travel accessory. This bag is currently retailing for $395, which is a very steep price. However, the quality of the bag is exceptional. So I understand how they are able to charge that much because there aren't a ton of products that are on the market that are similar to this Sojourn bag. It's really hard to find a wheeled backpack that is of a larger capacity that also converts into the backpack feature so it is difficult to find i did save up for this and i did a ton of research on the different options and i found this one was the best for me so you'll see it's a really tall bag it is 28 inches high so this is quite tall and the way that I rationed this was I was considering getting the 65 liter Fairview. I already have a 65 liter bag, but I wanted the wheeled version of it. And when I was looking at the dimensions, the Fairview or the Farpoint models are 27.5 inches. So this one was only a half inch taller and it has that additional 15 liters of capacity. I was already planning on checking the bag because I knew the weight limit would be over even if the dimensions fit in. For a little bit more money, I'll have a little bit more size and that can help me later on when I know I'm purchasing things overseas. Let's get into some of the features. So you'll see that the external part of the bag has these really nice straps and these are great for compression. So you'll just unbuckle those and it opens up like this and that allows it to become smaller if you have a lot of stuff packed into it. Pull the cord out and then attach it, attach it to the clip over here and then you can also make it even smaller, which is nice. So hopefully I can do that on my bag. It won't be exploding through the seams, but we shall see after I pack it. So that's the top strap. And then same at the bottom, there's the additional strap down there. If I turn the bag around, that's where you see the back compartment that holds the backpack straps. So I'll take that out in a second. I have the suitcase components right here. So this one's really nice. It's not one of the single metal rods. It's the double metal rods which I personally like better because you can attach a backpack to it and I think it just makes it a little bit sturdier. Whereas like the Fairview and Farpoint models, they're a singular metal rod. So I think this is better. The wheels are really, really stand out. So you'll see at the bottom of the bag, we have the high road chassis and it is very sturdy plastic and the wheels are heavy duty. So it is only two wheels. There aren't four wheels. But when I was messing around with it and wheeling it around my house, it seemed really easy to maneuver. And I've also heard these wheels are really durable for rough terrain, uh, which is when I will probably be using it because I mostly will use this bag in Asia. So let's get into the backpack straps now. 
So it's really easy to convert. You just unzip here. And then all of the backpack straps are hidden away. So you pull this strap out, you pull this strap out, they come unattached, and then the hip belt is hiding within the backpack. So you just pull the hip belt out. You'll see here that the hip belt just pushes up within this compartment here. All these aeration holes to allow some breathability within your back. And then this part pops out, which is the hip belt. And then you can, so you can then attach the hip belt to the bottom of the backpack. There's two additional snaps that these will connect into, and then you are able to put the backpack on. And then additionally, there is inside the bag a spot for your ID card right here. I'm wanting to put it back, I'll just slide this part in, back up, and then you'll just zip this part here. So I would do a better job of tucking this in later, but for the sake of this video, I won't do that. And then this part, when the belt is out, you can tuck this same strap into where the hip belt came out from. All right, let's look at the inside of the bag now. So the top compartment, they call this, I think the toiletry wet bag area. Um, so it's this really nice convenient pouch that you can see here that you can put your toiletry bag in, you could put your first aid kit, you could put whatever that you need up here if you want something to have easy access. This is really the only pocket on the outside that is small enough to just put random little things into. We're able to clip things to the side of the bag here. So I have a carabiner that I'll use to be able to clip here. And then this pack is also compatible with some of the day packs from Osprey. So you're able to connect those to the outside of your bag if you want to attach them to one another. I don't have any Osprey day packs and I honestly don't really like the aesthetics of them. So I won't be doing that, but I think it'll be really useful to be able to tie a wet towel or something to the outside of the bag. It's very convenient. So getting into the bag, now I'll change the point of view so you can see better inside the bag. So as you see, the zippers are right here. The zippers are very good quality and they also interconnected system where you can easily put a small lock in between the two holes to secure your bag really effectively. So the bag opens all the way from the top. You will see that it is a lovely fluorescent green color on the inside. Um, I don't know how I feel about the green. I'm glad that it's not black. It does make it convenient that you're able to see all of your stuff and access it very easily. And the inside of the bag, as I said, it opens just like that. So it's lovely. It opens like a suitcase. It's not top loading, which is a huge requirement for me when I'm looking into a travel bag. The top part of here is fully lined, so you'll see that there's two different zippered compartments that you can store things in. And then when you get into the actual bag itself, there is a lovely uh, compartment here that's made of the similar mesh that goes from the top of the bag to the bottom. On the other side, there is an additional pocket. This one is not mesh. However, it also goes from the top to the bottom of the bag. And additionally, there are compression straps within the bag as well. So you'll see that the outside toiletry bag does eat into the space that you have. So you have to be cognizant of that when you're packing because it will take space. Also, you can note here that some of the room of the bag is taken away by the wheel mechanism system so the pulley bar is noticeable within the bag it is quite sizable in there but i think that is worth being able to have the wheels of the bag now i want to show you what the bag looks like when you're actually carrying it or moving it around with you so i am 5'5 as i said so i'll show you how big it is in comparison to me so as you see here is the bag in its full height so it's 28 inches so on me, this is a very large bag. It goes to about mid thigh on me. Sorry, I'm out of the frame, but it is quite large. The maneuverability is really great though. It goes around really easily. And even with only having two wheels, it has that, has that 360 spin to it. So it's really great. It wheels really easily and seems really durable. However, it is a very, very tall. Now let me show you what it looks like when it's actually a backpack. Here she is in all of her turtle glory. So you can see the bag is absolutely massive. The cool factor is not there. However, you can carry a lot of stuff. So you have to weigh the pros and cons. So you'll see there's two strap options. 
once you take everything out of the back you have your attachable hip belt the hip belt I found was really difficult to actually attach I think mine is just quite stiff right now so I think over time it'll loosen up a little bit and it'll be easier to put together but it's not as quick as they make it seem when you're adjusting the bag to be a backpack so I have that belt and it feels really comfortable actually the quality is really great and then the strap up here connects Obviously, I don't have any weight in it right now, so I can't tell exactly how it feels, but it feels really, really comfortable as of now. So the height is quite high. It's almost over my head. It's really, really big, but it's fitting me really nicely considering I have a pretty short torso. It doesn't feel uncomfortable. I feel quite comfortable with this on my back. However, I do plan on mostly using this as a suitcase, so it doesn't really bother me that I look like the turtle like are you turtly enough for the turtle club because i really feel like that right now but it is what it is this is the price that you pay if you want to carry a lot of stuff with you the wheels you don't feel them at all that was one of my concerns but they did a great job of the wheels feel completely disconnected they are not touching my body in the slightest i can't feel them at all i wanted to do one other size comparison to show you how behemoth this bag is so on the left you see the osprey 80 liter on the right side that is the osprey porter 65 liter which is my other osprey bag that i own so i used the 65 liter for a year in australia and i found it somewhat small when they're sitting next to each other, it's kind of unbelievable, the size difference. I'll put the dimensions of the porter on the screen here. Um, but as you can see, there is a significant amount of room when it comes to comparing the 80 liter to the 65 liter. If you're after a lot of space, you can see right here that the 80 liter would be better for you. Who do I think this bag is for and who do I think this bag is not for? So this bag is perfect for you if you are a chronic overpacker, you're going on a very long trip uh, for instance, a year you're moving somewhere, I think that would be really great for you. I also think this is a great bag for you if you need the wheeled component, but you're traveling in some more rugged areas that might need the addition of the backpack straps. Those are all great uses for this bag. Who I think this bag is not for. So first off, the price of this bag is very, very expensive. So if you're on a budget, I don't know if this bag is worth the splurge for you. That's for you to decide for yourself. Second, this bag is huge. You do not need this much stuff if you are going on a one month trip, on a two week trip, on a three month trip. It's really, really big. You can get by with a much smaller bag and not pack as much stuff. I'm only purchasing this bag because I'll probably be gone over a year. I've traveled with the 65 liter before for a year and I didn't have enough space for me as a person. I try to be quite minimalistic, but I do like shopping. I do like buying things. I will be in multiple climates where I'll need different types of clothes and accessories. So for me, having that extra space gives me peace of mind that I can acquire things along the road and have space for them and not have to ship things back home because I hate doing that. So this is a great bag for the traveler that wants the best of both worlds. They have the wheeled component, but they also have the ability to carry it as a backpack. It gives them that extra space that they need. However, you do have to check this bag. There is no way in the world that this bag will be ever considered a carry-on. It is massive. So you do have to check it. You have to be at risk of losing luggage. All of those things that come along with having a check bag but it's a really rugged bag. The quality is exceptional. Osprey bags are always great quality. So I totally recommend it for that aspect. I think you need to have a certain use case for this bag to be best suited for you. If you're still interested in the wheeled version of the bag, they also come in a 60 liter as well as a 45 or a 40 liter. Um, I didn't go for the 60 liter because I already have the 65 and for me the 65 was a little small so I didn't think downgrading to a 60 liter would do me much good. However, that is an option if you're not going on as long of a trip as I am. So please let me know if you have any questions in the comments, any suggestions, anything that you want to talk about. I love talking about luggage. I hope this video was helpful for you today. Please subscribe to my channel for future travel related content. And I will be making a video soon of me actually packing this bag and you can see how much space it actually has. So please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Thank you. Bye.